Why, hello everybody. Welcome to Fundamentals of Criminal Law. This is the introductory video for the fall of 2021. Uh, the, maybe we'll return to some kind of normal on campus, but um, probably not semester. Um, but this is an online class, so it will stay the same. So the old face to face classes uh, kind of depends on uh, the situation with the particular student. But anyway, for this video presentation, let me get out of the way and we'll, we'll talk about what we're going to be doing this semester. So first, let me um, talk a little bit about the introductory quiz. And the reason I'm talking about that up front is the questions from that quiz are going to come from this video and from the APA plagiarism presentation that is found below that, uh, below this video. So be sure to um, watch both of them and you know, then take the introductory quiz. Now it's a 10 question quiz. Uh, you need to make a 100 on it. There is no time limit on it. Uh, you can take it, you know, take as much time as you need. You're going to need to show me that you understand what the requirements for the course are. That's the whole purpose of it. Now you have to make a 100, but you don't have to do it the first time. You can retake it. Keeping in mind, questions stay the same. The order will change, but the questions will stay the same. So if you miss them, look and see what you missed, and then go back and check the video, check the syllabus, whatever you have to do in order to then get the rest of those answers right. Um, so kind of pay attention to what's going on here. Now, before we get started on the particulars of the course, let me go ahead and, and uh, talk to you for a minute about me. Uh, just kind of introduce myself. I realized that I, you know, in some of my online classes I hadn't been introducing myself. Most of the students have known me because they've taken other classes, but some of you may not. So my name is Craig Foss. I'm the department chair of the criminal justice department here at Alvin Community College. It's really a one-man department, uh, but I will work closely uh, with the police academy, the law enforcement academy, um, and we, we do have a couple of part-time people teaching some of the classes, but, uh, but other than that, uh, if, you, if you're a criminal justice major here at Alvin College, you're going to take one of my classes. Uh, you can take many of my classes, so uh, it's just kind of what goes with the program. Um, just to give you a little background of myself, I am a twice-retired police officer. I spent 34 years as a full-time police officer. Uh, I got my first commission before most of you were even thought of. Um, I was a reserve deputy constable in Harris County back in 1977. Now, I'll tell you how times changed. The uh, academy that I attended uh, at, to become a reserve officer in Harris County uh, was a total of 72 hours. That's less than two weeks if you went full time. Uh, we went two days a week, probably about six or eight weeks, because we spent eight hours on the range on four hours on two different Saturdays. So, uh, yeah, you didn't learn enough to be a police officer. And there was no training when you became a deputy reserve deputy constable. Um, you know, they just said, here, go search some civil papers. So it wasn't a good situation. But, you know, it was kind of getting in my door, my, my foot in the door for a law enforcement career. Um, I had also worked in kind of the private security industry, working at a grocery store in Houston that was called Rice Food Market. I don't think there are any stores left. They had one big store that stayed around for a while, but I believe it's gone now. Um, we caught shoplifters, and then I worked for a year of uh, security at, uh, as a store detective for Target, um, where we I caught a lot of shoplifters there. And then my full-time career started uh, in 1979 with the Beaumont Police Department. The picture on the screen is me as a Beaumont police officer. Uh, a little bit thinner those days uh, and quite a bit younger. Um, a little bit different look. But, uh, you know, that was again um, in 1979. I, I had applied two years running for the Galveston Police Department before I went to Beaumont and, and didn't get hired. I uh, went across the state from as 
High Four North is Lufkin, as far south as Laredo. Uh, I missed the testing date by three days in Laredo. Uh, I took the test in uh, Corpus and uh, Bay City, Rosenberg, a bunch of other towns. And Beaumont and Victoria, uh, Beaumont was the first one to say, call me and offer me a job. Uh, Victoria called after that and offered me a job while I was in the academy. While working for Beaumont, I did not like the city of Beaumont. I, I got a call from Galveston and asked if I was still interested in going there, and I certainly was, so I ended up going to Galveston. I spent 21 years with Galveston Police Department. The majority of that time, I worked in the identification division. That's the crime scene unit. I was a fingerprint examiner, processed all kinds of crimes back during the, the gang war area. Even with crime increasing in the last two years, um, it's still less than half of what it was in the, the late 80s, early 90s. It is, uh, you know, it is, the violent crime was so much greater back then. So we, we were working a lot of, a lot of violent crime. I did spend time as a patrol officer. I spent a year working as an auto theft detective. I, uh, spent a year as a patrol sergeant on the night shift. That, that was fun. I uh, just didn't like working nights, but I liked like my job then, it was really a fun job to do. Uh, and in addition to being a fingerprint examiner, I've spent several years as a polygraph examiner. Um, that was a lot of work. Um, when I look back on things that I wouldn't redo, the polygraph examiner is one that I would not redo. Um, I'm glad I did it, but yeah, once was enough. All the fingerprint work, that would I'd redo that in a heartbeat. Uh, work and patrol, I'd redo that in a heartbeat. If, if, if I felt younger, I don't feel young enough to get out there and chase people and, and do all that, but, uh, you know, that, it kind of goes with, with getting old. I get to the grandpa years. So after I was there 21 years, um, I, uh, I was working Mardi Gras and I'm talking to a, one of my former officers that worked, uh, as patrolman when I was a sergeant in ID division who was working for the Dickinson Police Department uh, as their crime scene officer. Um, he was leaving and going to a different agency. Uh, and so they were having an opening. They needed a new forensic person. I was eligible to retire. So I called up, talked to them, and they, they, they were interested. I got hired there as a detective. And um, after 21 years in Galveston, I moved on to, 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 uh, to Dickinson, uh, working as their crime scene uh, officer, but the majority of my job there was working as a um, you know, fraud investigator. Um, worked a lot of fraud, and that was the, you know, kind of, I guess, bad luck, but the only area of crime in that decade, you know, early 2000s, that was on the rise, was fraud, and it was because of the change in technology. It was easier to steal somebody, steal from somebody, you know, over the internet than it was to break into their house. A lot safer. They're not going to shoot you. And the thing is, is you can steal from people that aren't even in the same city, the same state, or even the same country as you're in. So it's very difficult to catch a lot of these. Um, but, you know, some of the more traditional fraud cases that we did make many cases on. So uh, it was a it was a fun job. It really was. Um, now we'll move on to my, whoops, my educational history. Um, right out of high school, I decided I wanted to work in radio and television and declared a major at the University of Houston in radio and television and never took a class in that. I decided that, no, I don't want to do that. I thought about becoming a lawyer and said, no, that sounds too boring. I want to become a police officer. And that's, that's where I, I kind of eventually moved. Um, I went through U of H for one year, and when I decided to be a police officer, they had a law enforcement uh, degree at College of the Mainland. I read about it from the, you know, the, uh, uh, an article in the University of Houston uh, newspaper. So I ended up uh, going to College of the Mainland for a semester and a um, couple semesters, and then ended up getting a job in law enforcement, went to work for it. Time Beaumont Police Department, so I put my education on hold. Now, once I went to work back in Galveston, I started back to College of the Mainland part time. 
and then in 1982 I got my associate's degree. So it took about seven years to get a two-year degree. So if you moving a little slow, don't worry about it. It took me seven years, but it's even more when we talk about my uh, my bachelor's degree. So right after I got my associate degree, I went to the University of Houston in Clear Lake and with a criminology major, um, which was probably not the best for me because criminology is more a scientific study as opposed to criminal justice, which is more nuts and bolts, and I'm kind of more of a nuts and bolts type person. But the fact is, I was there for a couple semesters, and this little young lady named Alicia decided to visit my home and take it with her. Uh, Hurricane Alicia struck Galveston Island in August of uh, 1983 and destroyed my home. Now, I did finish the semester that I had already paid for. I took one more class. And after that, it was time to rebuild, and I decided to take a break. And I was going to take a semester off to rebuild, and that semester ended up going into about 22 years. Um, while attending the Law Enforcement Management Institute of Texas, uh, which is a, a, a nine-week training program where you go to three different universities and take classes, um, one of the instructors was a professor at Midwestern State University, and he talked about their online program. And so I decided to go back to school and, and get my bachelor's degree. I, when I told my father I wanted to be a police officer when I was a teenager, he, he wasn't real happy about it at first, but eventually he said, okay, that, I, I, I'm, I'm down with it. I, you know, understand what you want to do, but please promise me you'll continue your education. So I did uh, for a couple of years. And then I stopped. At the point that I, I, you know, this guy was talking at Midwestern, the professor at Midwestern was talking, I thought about that. My father was getting older. So I realized if I was going to complete my college degree, complete my promise to him, I needed to do it soon. So I enrolled in Midwestern. Another incentive was my daughter was getting ready to go off to college, and I wanted to be able to tell her, hey, you need to get your degree because I'm getting mine. And it kind of worked out. I made her go to my graduation. Um, I completed the degree at Midwestern, and I found out I liked going to school a lot better as an adult than uh, as a mature adult. Not that I wasn't an adult when I was 18, 19 years old, but I, you know, I wasn't at the point where I, um, you know, how can I say it? My concentration wasn't as much on academics as it was on other things, so uh, I did much better as an older adult. And I enjoyed it, so I ended up going into the uh, master's program at Sam Houston State. They had a weekend program. Uh, I was fortunate to have it paid for by the 100 Club of Houston, uh, and we went up once a week, uh, once a month for a Saturday and Sunday eight-hour classes on both days, and I did complete that program. And that's when I ended up segueing into teaching. Started teaching at the uh, University of Phoenix. I, I I don't want to say anything bad about the program. But let's just put it this way: I'm glad I'm not teaching there anymore. It, is, um, it was probably the one place that I worked that I did not like at all. And I mean, I, I just didn't feel that they were there for the students. I felt they were there for the profit motive. But um, anyway, uh, I came out here to, uh, to Alvin College to uh, recruit for new cadets, or for the cadets for uh, new hires in Dickinson, and found out that the uh, director of the academy was, uh, I mean, the director of the criminal justice program was retiring, and uh, went ahead and applied, not expecting to get the job, but uh, as it turned out, I did. And I'm glad I did. I really enjoyed teaching here. I'm not that crazy about the administrative work that goes with it, but I didn't like writing the reports as a police officer either. Most people don't, but it just kind of goes with the job, so you kind of have to do both of those. So now what we're going to do is I'm going to go ahead and get back to the course, and I'm going to go ahead and um, talk to you about what is expected of you and how to navigate through this course. Now, um, I'm in the instructor mode uh, to get to some of the things we'll see. I'll have to be in the instructor mode, but I'm going to go ahead and flip over to the uh, student mode. 
I'll have to switch back in a minute when we get to a, you know to, to show you some other areas because they're not going to show up on the screen uh, until you take tests and so forth. The um, everything's not visible. But we'll go back to the uh, the instructor mode in a minute to, to get to that. So I'm. If you do not know how to log into Blackboard, contact me and I'll get you there. Um, yeah, I'm not going to spend time showing you how to get into Blackboard. But once you get into your course, you should land on this page. This is uh, the dashboard page. Don't pay attention to what's due. Um, the due dates, because I use a, 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 a delivery of material based upon completing something before you get to see something else, the due dates don't work out. I don't use any of the due dates. So don't look for what's past due on here, but it will show up on there. Announcements will be there. Uh, please read the announcements. You'll get them by email. Um, and uh, it's like you've got something new to tutor me. Um, I guess that's a link to tutor me. I'm not sure which, they, they change tutoring programs here every once in a while. But if you need it, um, look into it see how well it works. I, I can't tell you anything about it other than that it just kind of appeared on there this semester. Uh, navigation the course. If we come over here to the left hand side you'll see um, all this these different tabs. Uh, course material is the main area. Start here is where we have the syllabus, schedule, and certain things. We'll look at that in a minute. The meat and potatoes is going to be the weekly content. This is where you get to the videos, you get to the quizzes, you get to see what you need to do each week. We've got a tab for the case review. You're going to have to do two case reviews for this course. We'll talk about them in a minute. And then finally, you've got a link to the exam tab. Those are the areas where you will be doing all your work. Um, we have other links on here, a communication section where you can email me or any of the other students in the class, uh, a direct link to the discussion board. Now, most of your discussions will go to through the weekly content, a link to my grades, and uh, a link to the virtual meeting room, which is uh, kind of a, uh, you know, a team Zoom type meeting room that's built into Blackboard. Um, if we need to meet, uh, talk to, about something that I wanted to show you my screen, we may do that instead of by phone, we may do it through this meeting room. And then we've got some other sections. We've got uh, a link to technical support, which uh, goes to the um, college technical support page. You get things like um, questions on, on Blackboard, um, you know, the Wi-Fi on campus, and so forth. Blackboard support. Um, we've got a direct link to Blackboard chat support if you need to talk to the Blackboard support people. Uh, career coach, course tools, and the link to the library. You probably won't use any of those links, but, but they're there if you need them. So what we're going to do now is we will go straight to the uh, start here page. Uh, and this is where we'll find the course syllabus. We're going to look at that in a minute. We've got the course schedule. Now, this should be pretty much um, stay the same unless we have like we had a freeze last year, year uh, that even shut down the internet because no one had a power. Uh, so th there were some changes in the online course. Generally speaking, the online classes aren't going to change as much. So th this is pretty close to what the schedule is going to stay. Uh, you can look and see what we do each week. This week is a short week. Um, the first week we start on a Monday. You have things that are due by Thursday. You have to get that quiz done. This is kind of part of taking role. You have to show that you're here. So we need to get the introductory quiz, uh, the introduce yourself discussion done. We're going to do a, um, an orientation on Tuesday. Uh, we'll talk about that when we get to week one tab and uh, where you'll either meet at one of three different times or if you are unable to meet at those times you'll need to contact me and we'll talk by phone and just make sure everybody's on the same page. Uh, and then you'll have things that are due each week. Uh, you'll 
pretty much go through one section or two sections a week where you'll have one or two quizzes and we'll um, have discussions that are due each week. The discussions for the most part are going to be exam reviews. Uh, other than the, the introduction discussion, the paraphrase discussion, uh, the name, the crime discussion, and the final discussion. Those four are not exam reviews, but we'll spend some time briefly going over the discussions. There is a video on how to do them. And the next thing on here is uh, going to be my office hours. This is more than likely the office hours, uh, but again, I don't know which courses are going to make and how you know things are going to go, so they, these hours may be modified. But the fact of the matter, you're online students, the best way to contact me is going to be by email anyway. Send me an email, and we'll set up a time to talk um, either by phone or by the virtual meeting. Um, I mean, not to say you can't come by my office, but if, you know, it's just uh, as an online student, it's generally more convenient for you to contact me that way. And um, it doesn't have to be during my office hours. I definitely meet with people at night all, um, all the time or, you know, any time outside. We just have to, you know, kind of um, make arrangements and send me an email and I'll get you there. Okay, the course textbook. Um, you can buy a copy of it, or you can just download it right here. This is the Texas Penal Code. Um, let's see if it uh, will maybe take a few minutes to download. It's only 443 pages. Uh, like I said, there's no need to, to spend the money um, if you don't want to. Uh, if you want a copy of it, then then it's great. Keeping in mind that this the, the laws in Texas are updated every two years. So, um, you know, the digital copy works great. This is the completely updated version. Uh, let's see, it's updated as of the law, changes in laws on um, you know, 7, 8, so July 8th of this year, 2021. Um, there will be some, there's possibility there's some other laws that will be passed that will change something in the penal code in special sessions and so forth. So there may be some more changes, but for the most part, um, most of the penal laws that are going to be changed by the legislature already have. Okay, so now we're going to go back to the syllabus. What we're going to do is just go over the material from the syllabus that is unique to this course, uh, and leaving out information that is um, kind of standard language. I, but I want you to read the whole thing anyway. And um, I'm just kind of be familiar with it. It's kind of, kind of your contract with us. Not quite, but similar. So uh, with my online classes, I always start off with a note that this is not a self-paced course. You will be a while to work ahead, but you must meet course deadlines. So in theory, everything will be available to you to complete the first week. So if you're, you know, a, a, a super charged person, and you want to get on there and work around the clock for the rest of the week and write your two um, case reviews and, and take all the exams and go forth, you can complete the course in a week with the exception of the follow-up post to other students' um, you know, post. Uh, you'll have to go back and do those. But you can complete everything else the first week. Nobody's going to do that. That would be kind of crazy. But you can definitely work ahead, and I would encourage you, particularly if you're someone that has problems meeting deadlines, get at least a week ahead and, and stay a week ahead. That way, if you get behind, you're not really behind. So, you know, just kind of work on that. Major exams in this test will be in a proctored setting using, uh, you'll need to use either a, a desktop or a laptop computer with Honor Lock proctoring extension in the Chrome browser. Now, Honor Lock works in any full Chrome browser. So it will work on a, on a Mac. Well, I didn't want one. I don't know. But I guess some of you just can't get a real PC. Uh, it works on PCs. It works on, uh, you know, Windows based PCs. It works on the Chromebook. So any of those. It doesn't work on tablets. It doesn't work on your phone. So those are things it won't work on. You will need a microphone and a webcam in your ID. Student ID is preferred, but if you don't get to campus to get it, you can use 
your driver's license will work just as well. You do need a stable internet connection. So just kind of keep that in mind. That is a part of this, this course to get, to get that done. Um, we've got a possibility of, uh, you know, having some, some, uh, you know, computers available on campus as long as campus is open. So in the event you do have issues, uh, there is a possibility if campus doesn't get shut back down that you could come to campus to take the exam so you know but it would be much preferred and a lot easier for you if you had the you know, computer with the working webcam and so forth now as far as communicating with me I already mentioned send me an email I'm gonna say it again send me an email uh, if you call my office and I'm you know more than likely I mean if you call during the office hours and I'm there I'll answer uh, but if I'm you know teaching the Academy I may be teaching some other courses in between uh, in meetings or, or the forth if you leave an e a message it's going to email me to call you uh, if you send me an email you can ask the question and I may be able to research the answer and when I call you back uh, or you know, maybe something we can handle by email but um, I'll be m more readily available to address the situation if you have that the full question in email so that's for method Okay, the course description, and this is a course, whoops, in the study of criminal law, including application and definitions, statutory elements, defense and penalties using the Texas statute, the model penal code, and case law. The course also utilizes the philosophical and historical development of criminal law in criminal culpability. Now, we, we looked at the, the first week, we're going to look at the model penal code, and it's the basis of the Texas penal code. And then the rest of the chapter, we're going to look at the laws in Texas. And then, of course, you'll have the two case studies. Uh, so, you know, that's, that's kind of what we're going to be looking at. You're going to learn some laws. You're going to learn some things that are against the law that you probably never knew. Okay, so the course outcomes. Upon successful completion of this course, the student will identify the elements of crime and defense under Texas statutes, model penal code, and case law. They'll classify offenses and articulate penalties for various crimes, uh, compare culpable mental states while assigning criminal responsibility. And we'll talk about what a culpable mental state is in the second, I think, second week of the course. We'll assess the impact of history and philosophy of current criminal law and evaluate the application of criminal law in other areas of criminal justice, such as law enforcement and correction. Uh, we already talked about the textbook. You don't have to buy a textbook. You can download it. Um, you don't need a copy of the model penal code. We'll, we'll go over that in class lecture. Uh, again, here's another copy of the uh, course schedule, um, which shouldn't change, but may. And, and, you know, if it does change, I'll let you know. This course will have three major exams and a final. Uh, the, the first three exams will be 50 questions. Uh, they will include material from the quizzes, and we'll talk about the quizzes in a minute. Um, you will need to complete them in 50 minutes. That's a minute per question. The average time is under 30 minutes. So most people have about 20 minutes left over. Uh, it, it, they are open book pet tests. You will be allowed to use your personal notes, your personal notes, in the textbook, or in this case, the penal code during the exam. You are not allowed to use documents prepared by anybody other than yourself or the textbook used in the class. The exception to this is, as part of the discussion, is going to be an exam review. And when you will be uh, comparing your answers to other students' answers, when you find somebody answered that's different, better than yours, you can incorporate it into your notes. You can't open up a copy of somebody else's notes, but you can take theirs and add them to yours. And not only can you do it, but you're encouraged to do it. That's the whole purpose of the, the discussion boards, the way they're set up. Um, you are definitely not allowed to use web searches, study sheets from other sources, or practice tests. Um, and that's cheating. That will get you to fail the class. I unfortunately had a student do this about two semesters ago. They were using Quizlets on the exam. And the thing is, Unlock shows me what's on your screen and it alerts me when you go to another page. So I, you know, it's like, 
you've got to be kidding. Um, you, you can't use that. And if you do, and you're caught, you will fail the class. Okay, let me say that again. If you're caught cheating, you fail the class. Uh, just kind of want to emphasize that. That's why it's highlighted in yellow. While there are weekly quizzes covering each chapter, or there will be weekly quizzes covering each chapter, and some weeks there will be two quizzes um, that you will be required to pass before you move to the next chapter, the next unit. Uh, you will be allowed unlimited attempts. The questions stay the same. They are different order, but they stay the same. So, you know, if you, if you know you miss things, you need to go back and... You just you have to make a 70. You have to go back and continue to make a 70. Now, in this class, we're going to have two case reviews. They're legal case reviews. Uh, you'll be using a template. It will be, uh, you have to be APA compliant. Uh, we'll talk about the topics and, uh, you know, the, the two different ones. One of them is going to be a, a, a U.S. Supreme Court case, and you'll pick a particular case. The second one, you will pick a topic and find a case under the Texas Court of Criminal Appeals and write a paper on that or do a, not really a paper, a, a case review on that. Your case reviews have due dates, and if you are late, you will get 10 points deducted. It's, if it shows up the day after they're due, you get 10 points off. Uh, if you get it in sometime during that week, you get 10 points off. If it's another week, if it's due on, on Thursday night, and you turn it in on Friday, you lose 10 points. If you turn it in the next Thursday, you still lose 10 points. If you turn it in the next Friday, now it's two weeks late, you, you, you lose 20 points. And then you don't want to keep going from there. Uh, participation, uh, the discussion is our participation grade. Uh, and you will have to do follow-up discussions. There's an, another video on the discussion board, so we'll, we'll uh, kind of defer to that. I'll show you where you can find that video. Uh, academic honesty is of the utmost importance. Don't get caught cheating. Don't get caught buying a paper on the, you know, the, uh, in this case, the case review. Uh, if you do that, you fail the class. Okay, as far as the grading summary, uh, the, the tests are all worth 15%, the three major tests. The finals worth 20%. Now, the difference between the final and the first three tests is, is the final is going to have 80 questions. There will be 50 questions covering the new materials that we've learned since uh, the third exam. And then 30 questions will come directly from the quizzes that were for the chapters covering the first three exams. And by directly from it, I mean it's the same pool. So the questions will be the same. The case reviews are going to be worth 10% of your grade, so 5% each. The quizzes are going to be worth the same as a major exam. That's 15%. Now, a little bit of a hint. You can retake the quizzes as often as you want. Your score that is marked in the book is always going to be the highest score you made. So retake them until you make a 100. It will help your grade. And then discussion board is going to be worth 10% of your grade. Now, attendance in an online class is a little bit different. There is no particular time for the class other than we, we do have the uh, the orientation where you've got three different times that you need to be there. Um, or, I mean, you only have to be there one of the three times. Or you have to make arrangements to talk to me just to make sure we're on the same page. So, uh, But other than that, you're, you're kind of um, you know, good to go with uh, doing it whenever you want. You can work on your stuff at 3 o'clock in the morning. You can work at, at 3 in the afternoon uh, or any other time. It is best to set a time up as your class time so that you, uh, you know, I'm in class at this time, I can't go out and party, I can't go out and you know, shoot darts, or I don't, I don't shoot darts, never have, I don't know why I brought that up, but it could be anything. Set your class time and do your class work and stick to that time, and you'll, you'll, you'll do fine. The way we go with attendance in this course is we look at the deadlines. So if during a week you have to do a, a quiz, uh, you have a case review due, you have a, a discussion and follow-up post on a previous discussion due, if you do all of those things that week, then you're counted as present. You do them by the deadline. The deadlines will be Thursday nights. If, on the other hand, you don't do any of them, 
then you're marked absent. Now we've got the middle line there where you, yeah, you did the, you turned in your case review, but you didn't take one of the quizzes. Then you're marked late. Now, during the course of the semester, for every two lates, you'll be considered one absence. So a late is considered a half an absence. If you have more than three absences during the semester, or the equivalent of three absences, you will lose one grade letter off your final semester grade for anything over three. So you've got three weeks where you didn't do anything, that's three absences, and then you've got a week where you did some of your work but not all, that's a half an absence, so then you're three and a half. Well, that's over three, so you have now lost a letter grade on your, your final semester average. And then if you have two more weeks where you do a little bit of work but not all of it, that would be, um, now you're at four and a half absences, and you would do those two letter grades. So if you got an A average, you make a C. If you got a C average, you fail the class. So just kind of keep that in mind. Make sure you get all your assignments in done. And also, keep in mind, just because you were counted as absence or late that week, you still have to complete all the assignments in the course for the semester in order to pass. You've got to turn in both case reviews, and you've got to take all the quizzes, and you've got to take all the tests. And that is a requirement of the course. Now, if you do have too many absences, well, I'll be notifying the uh, Office Advising Services, uh, the Retention Officer, and they'll be contacting you to find out what's going on. Well, the rest of this is, is going to be standard language. Please spend some time reading it and going over it. And now we'll move back on to the next thing is the weekly content. Um, this is where you have the meat and potatoes of the course. Uh, you can kind of scroll down and see what we're doing each week. Like week one, we've got eight different tasks, including watching this presentation, uh, watching the APA presentation, if you hadn't seen it before, uh, introducing yourself in the, uh, the discussion board, completing a paraphrase exercise, uh, taking the introductory quiz and passing it with 100, so you may have to do it more than once. Then we've got the, the video on the case review that you will watch and you've got a case review quiz. Now you'll need to take it and make a 100 on it. That shows me that you understand what's going on. And then finally, you will also have to select your topics for the case review, and we'll get to the case review shortly. So that's what will be there for week one. So we'll click over here and look. Um, the other thing is um, we do have our orientation. Uh, the orientation will be uh, taking place on for all three of the online classes at the same time. So if you're in multiple online classes, don't sign up for more than one um, or, or show up. You don't need, necessarily need to sign up. You do need to leave, let me know um, by email which one you're going to, to attend. I would, would I ask you to do that or let me know that you can't attend any of them. But they're going to be on Tuesday uh, on the 24th. Um, since most of you won't be looking at this video until the, the you know, 23rd, uh, the sessions will be at 10 a.m., 2 p.m., or 7.30 p.m. They will be virtually, and you'll click on this link here, which will uh, actually bring you to another page where you can kind of click the link to go to the, uh, the new one. And you just, there it goes. And you will then... Um, put in your name and click join the session. I don't want to do it because it pulls up my microphone. It's going to ask you if you can use your microphone. It, you know, this is, you know, I'll go ahead and hit join. I'll, I'll, I'll stop it before we can let it use my mic. Um, and then you have the mic and the camera that you want it to uh, it, uh, allow the use of. Um, and we'll just have a real brief session. Uh oh, your system doesn't support our, enough video. Yeah, because I've got, I'm using the mic for another class, so for this presentation. So let me go ahead and close that out and come back to the screen. Oh, I can get to it. There we go. Uh, so again, let me know whether you can't be there or if you can't be there, uh, or let me know which session you're planning to show up at. Um, and it shouldn't take more than 15, 20 minutes. Uh, just kind of make sure everybody's 
watch this video and know what's going on. Now each week I will have a weekly update video that you can watch. Why, hello everybody and welcome. Uh, go ahead and name whichever criminal justice class of mine you're signed up in um, right now. Because, um, and that's my weekly update video. Um, I will probably do a briefer one this week since I've got the, this introductory video uh, covering most things. It will, but there will be a weekly update video. Um, then you'll be able to look at the same week at a glance. Uh, this video will be replacing the fall of 2020 video. Here's the APA plagiarism. It's the same one that's been around since 2016. So if you've taken my classes before and you're comfortable with it, you don't have to watch it. Here you'll do you introduce yourself. You will click on it. You're going to create a thread before you can see anybody else's work. And then you will you know, tell us a little about yourself, uh, name your major, your current or future career goals, and one interesting fact about yourself. And you can include other things if you like. You will have to do some follow-up posts that will be due next week, um, but um, you, um, you know, just kind of welcome each other. This is a fairly easy one. Then we've got a paraphrase exercise where you're going to read an article from a newspaper. You will then close it and um, you know, write a summary of it. That's called paraphrasing. Uh, you watch the APA video right here. It will tell you more about paraphrasing. And then I've got a video on Honorlock. We will be using Honorlock for our introductory quiz, not because I'm afraid you're going to cheat on the quiz, but because I want you to get used to using Honorlock, and we're going to see if there's any issues with Honorlock uh, that, that you have to fix um, before before it is on the next actual exam. So watch this video if you've never used Honorlock. If you've used it, you're, you, you should be good to go. Just take the quiz. Then we've got the case review, uh, the video to watch on that, and we'll get to that in just a second. The last thing that will be at the bottom of each weekly content is an Ask Your Instructor discussion board. This is an open discussion where I want you to ask questions that you about the material, about things that are due, about you know anything that you want to know about except personal stuff. Um, keeping in mind that everybody in the class will see this. Now if you click on ask the instructor it will bring up the, the discussion board. If you come up here and click on this thing that says subscribe then it, what will happen if anybody ask a question on there you'll get an email telling you that they ask a question and um, then it may be something that is of importance to you. So um, questions you don't want to ask about about your grades, don't ask questions about you know your what courses you need to make or anything like that. For those send me an email. But you know for topics about due dates, uh, you know what does this law mean? What's this? Ask it here, because other people will probably, um, you know, benefit from the answer. So that that's a good thing. Um, and again, everybody go in there and subscribe to it. That way, you'll be notified when there are questions that come up. Don't worry about getting inundated. I've been using this for about you know about four or five semesters now, and I don't think I've gotten more than five questions in any particular class. So it's not something that's going to overwhelm you. So I don't think I've changed the tab on this one, so I better come up here. Um, you know, this is uh, click on the case review, and here we've got the video on the case review for you to watch. Hey everybody, in this presentation we'll spend a little bit of time talking about your case reviews, and so that will tell you all about it. Here's the template to use, the case review instructions. Uh, the due dates are uh, October 7th and November 4th. These case reviews are rather quick. They don't take a lot of time, but they do take some time. Now, you're going to go to get these. Go to Google Scholar, and you, we'll go over here real quick. And uh, let's say you selected Miranda versus Arizona. Go over to Google Scholar. You're going to tell it you want to do case law and simply put it in in search and you will get 
all kinds of cases that are about Miranda versus Arizona. There, there's the actual case right there, um, highly cited case. And then you'll have to read through this and figure out what's going on. Again, watch the video. It tells you a lot more about what you're doing. What you do need to do this week is to come up here and sign up. Well, after you watch the video, you got to take the quiz. You need to sign up for your case reviews. And the first one is going to be a particular case. You will then type your name in here. Um, do not type over to anybody else's. This is a first come first serve type situation. And then you will then go and select your second topic. Um, I can get back to the case review. And, and this time you're going to select a topic and then you're going to search for a case in the Texas Court of Criminal Appeals. Again, watch the case review video and tell you more about it. The uh, last section in here that we'll look at before we go back to the weekly content is the exams. The exam will not show up until you're eligible to take it. There is another uh, link to the honor lock video if you, you haven't watched it and need to. I've got some instructions on what you need to do for honor lock again. Watch that. Um, in order to see the first exam, you'll have to complete it the first five discussions and made 70 on the first five quizzes. Uh, and each time you can see what, what's required of you before they're visible. You, once you take that, you can move on. Now, you can't look at uh, chapter six's video or discussions, uh, you know, the video for discussion six until you take exam one. So you do have to take the exams before you can move on. Now we'll go back to weekly content for week two, and I'll show you what I mean by not seeing things. Um, Last year's weekly update, those will, will change each week. Um, um, here's a learning objections discussion. The one thing that you don't see here is going to be the video because this student in this preview hasn't taken that first quiz, uh, the introductory quiz or done the, the uh, discussions. But once you do that, then it will show up and so will the, the quiz for that. The discussions um, are right here. You, you, know, you want to pull up your discussion topic sheet as you're watching the video and, and, and reading and go ahead and fill in this. Now, the Model Penal Code chapter, we do not have a book to read, so everything's going to come from the, um, you know, from the lecture. So be sure to pull that up before you watch the lecture. Kind of fill it in as it goes. Your discussions will include the, um, you know, you'll have to do a, um, that uh, exam review, and then you'll, you'll um, tell us what you found most interesting about the chapter. So those are the two things you'll have to do. And then the following week, you'll have to do the follow-up. So in, in week two, you'll do follow-up to introduce yourself to the class and the paraphrase exercise. And again, here's a link to the Ask Your Instructor. So let me go ahead and exit the preview, and I'll show you in that week two that the quiz in the video will be there uh, once you take the material. So here's the model penal code video. Well, howdy, everybody. In this presentation, we're going to be... There you go. And there's your quiz uh, that you'll need to make the 70 on. And then the... Follow-up, we'll go to the third week. Uh, the follow-up on the discussion is kind of important. Uh, so if you want to get full credit, you'll have to do, well, I, I thought I had the uh, rubric set up here. I'll, I will have it set up for you um, for the follow-up, what you'll need to do for that. But that will be uh, um, available on this. Uh, this uh, I'll probably post it in week two. Uh, and, and, and also week um, um, three. So that's what I've got. If you've got questions, send me an email um, or you know, hopefully you watch this before we have our um, uh, orientation and you can ask them at the orientation. I'm looking forward to working with each and every one of you this semester and uh, 